value over time. And I find that another intriguing aspect. Well, like, give me an example. Mercedes G Wagon has mm. kept its similar box shape. Like, it hasn't gone through any renditions of shift. Right. Well, sort of. For it's example. My, well, it, it's slight, right? I minor, mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the C series. I mean, it's, you know, it keeps evolving a little bit at a time, but it never makes. But that's because Mercedes is a very, very conservative company that way. I mean, they, they make design changes incrementally, by mm. and large, unless they come out with their, you know, really fancy and the supercars. I mean, you look at the Gullwing, a 1950s Gullwing is a unique automobile. Okay. There's very, there's not very many of them ever made. Sure. Not many of them on the road. Sure. And if you can, if I, I personally think of it as a work of art. That's what I look at it as. Mm. I think it's form and function and design and yeah. style yeah. all so incredible. Like yeah. the like the Jaguar E Type. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they, you know. Yeah, that's another one, right? I mean, they're yeah. they're beautiful. I the don't curves. care what you say about yeah. it. They're beautiful. Sure. And um, you know, and, and for all the same reasons. Right, right. right. Uh, yeah, those are not made. Those, because you know, and if they were to make them, it would be a, it would be a ersatz, you know, cheap imitation, right? Well, I think uh, that's also like one of the big reasons why cars aren't kind of made the same way anymore. Is like um, the materials they use are kind of cheaper. They cut corners. Oh, um, right. Right. You know? yeah. Well, yeah. They're, well, they're using uh, ES, plastic. So, uh, yeah. plastic, a lot of plastics, which isn't yeah. so great, although they're yeah. mandating reusable plastics. Yeah. And, uh, and even the body is like just little uh, pieces that you have yes, to buy. Yes, but they're actually yeah. they're pretty sturdy and strong. They actually will take a, a much harder, harder crash than the older cars will. The, I, I've noticed now too, once upon a time, like back in my day, it was okay for cars to be dinged and banged up. But today's model of cars, if you like ding your bumper, you have to like replace the bumper oh, because yeah, yeah, that's right. it, it, yeah, it yeah, doesn't pop back. Day, you know? And it's culturally aesthetic not to drive around a beater like that, right? If I pulled yeah. up with a, my bumper hanging off, you guys would probably feel <laughs> well, less than comfortable yeah. getting in my vehicle, even though it still drives soundly, right? Yeah. So there's the aesthetic look now that it seems that values, in our culture at least, uh, complete wholeness and presentability, right? That is also a well, huge thing. Is that yeah, yeah presentability has yeah. become all, has also changed. Well, yeah. um, and, then, and what is acceptable? I agree. Yeah. And also, yeah. That's what means the technology is changing. Also, how cars are being used is changing. Cars are changing from like your own personal mobility machine into a utility. Yeah. Right. You know, like yeah. if you go to Toronto now, yeah. most a lot of people don't own cars anymore. If they yeah. need a car, they have the right shares. Sure. You know, well, you know, you know, and that's why I never drove in Toronto. That's why well, I never got my license you? in Toronto. Because why would you? I mean, yeah. that's the point. Yeah. You know, There's CTC everywhere, the transit's I, everywhere. You got subways. You got exactly. When I first moved to you, Calgary, yeah, yeah, and I told people I didn't drive, they were like, they looked at me like I was an alien. Uh, they were well, <laughs> in a way you were. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this place is cool. And the other um, conversation that I see coming up on the horizon is with the new electronic car options, well, especially right. with Tesla. <coughs> so there's people who are saying, yeah, it might be f functional and, and safe in some capacity, but there's people who still value the sound and the feel of an engine uh, and working on an engine, you know, with their tools or something along those lines. Apparently, yeah. apparently, yeah. Because electric cars are so quiet, yeah. But apparently, for some reason, government regulation still requires it to make noise. Yeah. But you can program whatever noise that you want it to no. make. <laughs> no, that's not entirely true. And as a matter of fact, it's being mandated that they have to make noise. That's right. Yeah, no, that's um, exactly my point. And yeah. this has already happened in Europe. Yeah, but oh, that it's was not... very nearly an accident for this guy. Holy jump! Uh, but this guy pulled out of the left turn lane right in front of that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. But uh, no, no, I know they are. That's it's mandated that they, that they make noise, but it doesn't. It's not mandated what, what noise kind of they noise? make, no, and I you know, can and program that's... the noise. To <laughs> no, make. No, 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 actually, it, it hasn't really started to happen like that yet. And in fact, manufacturers are starting to figure out what kinds of noises their cars should make. And this is. I'm sure that has. Ha I'm sure that has sparked a yeah. A well, this has been going thing. on for quite a while, actually. Um, yeah. And uh, what's happening in Europe? And Europe is probably going to set the standards for this. The government in the EU is saying no. You are all going to sound like a car. It's going to sound. People are that going to know that what a car sounds like because you have to be able to recognize that that's what it is. Well, and yeah. if you hear if you hear an internal combustion people. engine, yeah. you will know exactly. 
yeah. children, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Your own self looking the wrong way as you step off the curb, which yeah. people can do. Yeah. <coughs> if something distracts you for whatever sure. reason it happens. Sure. But anyway, so they're actually going to mandate this. And once it happens in one gigantic market like that, yeah. then it becomes like, well, we're not going to do it differently everywhere because the customer Yeah. And if, if it proves to be successful, uh, uh, if the measure proves to be successful, yeah. then, then they would just replicate it, I would think, as they do, because that's what we are now, is we're into the era of the global manufacturing platform. It's another thing with, with classic cars, by the way, yeah. to bring it back, as we're getting close <laughs> to where we're going, yeah. is that, you know, they weren't so standardized on a global scale at all, as a matter of fact, yeah. you know, there was that's two or true. three, yeah. there was only two or three regions in the world yeah. that were leaders in the manufacturing industries, and those were Western Europe and North America, and uh, to a lesser degree, um, you know, other parts of the world like, well, Asia, of course, and uh, Japan. Japan, well, Japan, but made, made in Japan in the 60s was considered a joke. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Was, no. By the 1970s, they cars started to right overtake now, the best cars in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, along with the Germans, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, well, that's just it, right? Like, yeah, I guess like manufacturing around the world has become, become but it's become, become a more, global platform. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, components are made in all markets, all everywhere, yeah. and they're yeah. shipped in these vast quantities. So a certain amount of standardization yeah. becomes a necessity because how are these parts to be interchangeable? And maybe that's not a bad thing because interchangeability means that you know availability and cost comes down. To Anyway, we're moving into the era of the electric car, and that's coming so fast now. Yeah. It is, and actually, like, I know a lot of manufacturers are saying that they're going to start phasing out uh, fuel cars. They've already moved. Yeah. yeah, they've already started. They make commitments and saying by 2030 or 50. Yeah. Or, yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. So, yeah, most manufacturers won't be making them past 2030, 2035 or so. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm if you okay think about it, it, buddy, we were talking about this with the last ride we had. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah. And uh, like, think about it. You'll never. But he became from an interesting standpoint because he grew up long, in an oil and gas family. Right, and had been a long haul trucker. Too. Exactly. So he came from an interesting um, perspective. Yeah. perspective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. But, um, but think about it. You won't have to change your oil ever again. I know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, like, my mind's going two places at once. Yeah. Electric car. I, and I, then, that's right. I, I was just gonna say, I, I, at the close here, I, I I must make a request of you guys. This has been such a fascinating conversation, <laughs> fascinating. But here, the request is this, and before I make the request, I'd love to encourage you to say no if it's not your jam at all, because it's not everyone's jam. Right. When I don't drive my Uber, on occasion I'll come across conversations as intriguing as this one. I'm like, I'd love to share this with my audience, my platform, where basically I love featuring conversations that are intriguing especially by way of encouraging them to say, here's what could be when you're connecting with strangers in general, but just with people that you may not understand or know beforehand kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Um, but I would love to get permission first because it's, like I said, So what, what, what is your plot? What is this thing you do? I'm, so I know you've really into something here. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so this is my handle on my car right. there. I, um, Binyam Asras. That's me. <laughs> uh, Kindnessologist, I like that. That's I pretty appreciate cool. I appreciate that. I like that kindnessologist thing. I appreciate that. So that's uh, the basic that's theme. That's a very cool thing. To be Thank doing. you. So that's what I, I use my influence. Well, sure, of course you can. As far as I'm concerned. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure I had buy-in before I do, because my followers know I don't do anything unless I have enthusiastic consent. And so, right. if course. you follow my um, my work, basically it's my way of encouraging others in what human interaction and connection could look like in a time when many feel uncomfortable or like they're kind of lost in trying to access it and i like presenting models of what could be and uh that's my main investment there on uh -huh. the sidelines so how long are you driving uber for two years and how wow. is it working out for you i'm loving it i I've, I've had some amazing well, opportunities I, mean, of course, I, mean, I used to drive cabs so i know what it's like when you okay. meet people there and do, you know it's just i drove cab yeah, right here i used to drive cab in the big city of yeah. Seattle, man back in the 80s, 70s and 80s yeah well, the 80s, really, I guess. Yeah. The 80s, 80s, not 70s. But, uh, yeah. And so I met a lot of people that way, too. I am loving you for that reason. Oh, yeah? And yeah. How's, how's the money? Is it all right? The money, mean, you know, I, I work long hours. So I put in maybe 14 hours, 16 hours oh, a day. Oh, that's a long day. Oh. It is. But, I mean, the thing is, I, I enjoy it okay, immensely. And so right. it, it really seems like 
hard labor for me. Um, uh -huh. uh, I love it's still engagement. a long day though. It is a long day, yes. Yeah, yeah for sure. The one where um, I find I'm relishing it, and then um, the there's also the wear the care and cost on the car, right? That's true. You know, that's like that's true. And I'm I... looking after all that as well too. That's right. I mean, yeah. You know, like that's, it's, yeah. But in my estimation, I mean, like I, the primary reason why I started my platform was just more so to encourage other drivers, because I mean, um, my experience had been so favorable, and the reviews I was getting back was really encouraging. And so I thought maybe there's something I could do to encourage other drivers who. Right trying to figure the way out forward you know so the intention was just to start off saying hey other um, fellow uber drivers here's what I'm finding works along the way and I'd love to encourage you uh, with my experience well I'm gonna tell you Benny I'll, 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 I'll look up I'll go to your website we'll be in touch but yeah it's been a real pleasure meeting you Likewise. and uh, yeah. good luck with your uh, with what you're doing I hope to see you guys again along well, the way I won't be here good. very often because I live on the other side of the country oh but. I see I see <laughs> but maybe I'll see you I would be delighted and I will yeah. definitely give you a follow on Instagram thank you Robin yeah. I appreciate that have a good night same to you dear good night thanks